Hi everyone, it's Simon here, and I'd like to welcome you to this video in which I'm going to introduce you to Slack. Now, if you already know what Slack is, then you'll know why I'm so excited to be presenting this session. If you haven't heard for it, you're in for a real treat. Now, Slack's a piece of software that's been around for about the last 18 months, and it sells itself as team communications for the 21st century. Okay, so this session is for anybody who's working with others as part of either a small or large team and isn't already using Slack. Over the course of this video, we're gonna be looking at what the product is, we're gonna be touching on some of the problems that it solves, and we're gonna be looking at some of the key features that make it so awesome. Before we talk about Slack, let's talk a little bit more about email. Now, I don't need to tell you that email has turned into a bit of a monster. As an efficient means for communicating with people, it's broken. I've mentioned it before, but McKinsey recently reported that about 30% of the office workers' time is spent managing email. On top of that, 10 years ago, 50 to 60% of the email received was from another person. Now that number is closer to 8 to 10%. The other 90% is from machines. It's email marketing, it's receipts, it's new Twitter followers, it's emails about Facebook comments, check-ins and things like that. There's a lot of blah, 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 and it's a really, really noisy medium. On top of that, much of the work email we receive is unnecessary too. You get CC'd on emails, people reply all, and all of a sudden your inbox is full of messages that you really don't need to know about then and there. It's got so bad that people are trying to use other tools such as WhatsApp, Facebook groups, Skype messaging and the rest to try and solve this problem. Um, although the issue is that none of these solutions have been developed for this purpose and so you're trying to fit something uh, like a square peg into a round hole. Fortunately, there's a solution, uh, and that solution is Slack, so let's have a look at it. Now, as I mentioned at the start of this video, uh, Slack sells themselves as team communications for the 21st century. The way they summarize their service is all of your communication in one place, instantly searchable and available wherever you go. I mean, the easiest way I've found to describe it to people as WhatsApp on steroids. In a physical sense, Slack exists as both a mobile app for iOS and for Android, as a web app that you can access through the browser, and also as a standalone client for both Mac and PC. So it really is available everywhere, which is one of its most attractive features. Um, you can find out much more about it and download the software at slack.com. Now, if I come across a little bit evangelical in this video, it's because I am. This is a, a product that I absolutely love using. And you can see that I'm not alone. You can see on this chart on screen that in the last 16 months, Slack has moved from zero daily users to now having 1.1 million daily users of its service. And so this is something that people love and it's starting to grow really, really quickly. But rather than trying to explain the service to you, let me just show you really quickly um, the product itself and point out some of the features that you might be interested in. Okay, so here we are in Slack. Now, you can use Slack to communicate about anything. It might be about projects, it might be transactions, it could be about deliveries, financials, sharing images or GIFs or anything. Now, most of that information is gonna be useful to everyone, but not every single discussion needs to be seen by your entire team. And that's why Slack provides three different ways of communicating. They are through channels, through groups, and through direct messages. Now I'll talk a little bit more about exactly what each of those means now. So at the top of the column here, you'll see we have channels. Now channels can be created when you want to uh, have discussion around a particular theme or topic. Now uh, conversations in channels are open to your entire team so they can be viewed by anybody. They're public in that regard. Um, and any messages posted to those can be sort of searched by anybody that accesses your Slack. So you can see some of the channels that we've created for our Slack here. So in the middle, we have our general channel. And so this is basically just general work chit chat stuff. Some of the other specific channels we have are a channel for the Christmas market event that we're organizing at the end of this year. Uh, we have a channel for different events that we're organizing, a channel specifically for finances. And so for each channel, you can invite uh, the people in your team that I guess need to contribute to that discussion and need to see what's happening. Even if somebody's not a member they can dip into and see what's being said but those people that are members of that channel will be notified when there's a discussion in there. So the second type of communicating in Slack is through using a private group. At the bottom of the list here you can see that. Private groups are best used for subjects that are sensitive or confidential or only limited to a small number of team members. So any discussion in a private group 
uh, will only be visible and searchable to members of, uh, of that group. So you can see that we don't actually have any private group set up at the moment for our accelerated group, but to create one is as simple as clicking the plus arrow here. So I can uh, just name my chat group, testing purpose chat about things, and then I can choose which members of our team I want to add to the group. And so I can add Emma and say Dominica. And you can see that the group's been created. So anything I post to this group will only be visible by Dominica and Emma. And so other members of our team uh, won't know that this group exists. This sort of private group testing won't be displayed in their version of the software. Finally, the third way that you can communicate in Slack is through direct messages. And so these are useful for private one-on-one -on -one conversations between two team members. And so the only people that can see these communications are the sender of the message and the receiver of the message. And so again, uh, basically you can see here my chats with Andre, here are my chats with Eduardo, etc. So we've had a good look at this central column. Now on this left hand side here you can see three buttons each with a number beneath them. These are to, um, so you can move between different teams and so this top button is our accelerator team. This second um, button is for our launch pad program that we ran recently. Um, there are about 35 people in that group and then this bottom one is our hatchery environment which is um, our startup business community uh, for student entrepreneurs at Accelerator. Moving between your teams is as simple as just clicking on a button. Moving into our hatchery group, you can see the way we've set it up is you know, largely similar. And so in our channels, we have separate channels for you know, events, uh, a channel specifically for people starting food businesses, a channel for general chit chat, and another channel for resources that people might find interesting. Down here, I can, we have the individual participants in our program, and so I can send messages to those people. Um, Here's my chat history with Anna, who's a founder of uh, one of our businesses called Arctic Powerberries. And then down here, we have the private groups. And so we've set up one private group for each of the businesses in our programs. And again here, so um, if you want to know the membership of a private group, you can just come to the top of the screen and click the, uh, the person icon. And it'll tell you here, uh, you can see that I'm a member, Anna's a member, and Toby's a member. Now, I've shown you very quickly the software and how we use it. Uh, a couple of final things I want to say. Firstly, you know, it's different, yeah? Um, it requires a bit of a shift in thinking to move from email to using something like Slack, but I'd say give it a go. It's really quick to learn, it's really easy to use, and it doesn't take long to you know, start making it really work for you. So just jump in and give it a go. The second point relates to the first point here, and so everybody on the bus. So this won't work if there's only one or two of you on board, or half the team, or two thirds of the team. You've got to have everybody on board and prepared to give this a go. The third thing, um, you know, all of the uh, all of their software is great. It works really well. The user experience is excellent, and the mobile client, uh, the app for iPhone and both Android, is a real delight to use. And lastly, and I think probably most amazingly, is that the software is free. Now there are paid versions, um, you know, but that's typically targeted uh, more enterprise level customers and people that have really specific needs, but the basic uh, version of the software and the version that we're using really successfully doesn't cost a cent. Okay, so the last thing I have for you are a couple of useful links which I'll show you quickly now. Uh, the first link um, is just a link to the Slack Help Center where there's some really explicit and clear instruction on exactly how to set up Slack uh, and how to use it. Yeah, And so take your time, browse through here, and it will answer almost certainly answer any questions that you might have. The second link I've included in the presentation is a link to this article. Um, basically, uh, some tips on how to best configure uh, Slack to avoid unnecessary distractions. And so once you've got the basic functionality in hand, you can have a look at this and customize the product a little further. And that brings us to the end of Slack. This is a really awesome product and I hope that you find it as useful as we do. Bye for now.